He looks calm and collected. In fact, they'll be ecstatic because as we were discussing, Korea, such a dominant force in this sport. But now, emerging nations, particularly, as we've said, Iran, which is on a stellar curve in terms of its progression. Well, starting to come to the fore. Saddam, uh, excuse me, Sada Asal. For Iran, just nicking that point on the final countdown to the end of the first session. Song My Sob of Korea. Well, got it uphill now. But uh, still early doors yet, Ewan. Well, I'd say that this, this uh, weight category is quite a hard category because, uh, you know, both featherweight and welterweight being a natural weight of most men, therefore you're going to get quite a few fighters uh, competing for that, that position as a team member. So you're going to get quality fighters, uh, not to say the other fighters aren't, aren't quality, but you're going to get a really hard competition because of that natural weight category. Well, uh, it made me smile when you said that it is a natural weight category come, for men. <laughs> I was thinking, that's come why on. I don't do Taekwondo, because I couldn't get the belt around me. No, it was 172 kilograms, this isn't, then it would be a natural, true, well, be you, a natural you, weight for me. You were a great fighter, well, this isn't true. Well, listen, Korea now has had a point deducted. They're down one with Hello. one warning. It's up. So there really is some grudge between these two players. And, uh, well, it's starting to heat up in this, the second session. Definitely. All eyes focused on this now. At least they've made the adjustment to the score because I didn't see an adjustment earlier on, but they've made it now. So that's Iran ahead by one point. That's right. So Korea will be looking to pressurize and Song Mai Sob bringing the fight to the Iranian but he's just got to be so careful that he doesn't get too aggressive because he'll open up an opportunity for Sada Asal on the counter to increase that one point lead it's a tricksy old game Taekwondo it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the, a funny old game <laughs> as, as my, old, my old friend Jimmy Greaves would say yes but um, yeah, too much aggression, you leave yourself open. And uh, brilliant double turning kick by the Korean. Same leg, almost like a machine gun fire. Rapid fire that came in and he scored a point, but, but at Iran the same time, simultaneously, back. Iran kept that lead margin there. They've both got warnings against them. And Korea has pulled it level. It's even Stevens. Five, four, three seconds to go in this the second quarter. And they both end up level. Oh, how tense is this? This is the closest match so far. Well, it's nail-biting stuff. This male featherweight category. Song Myung Sob to Zada Asal to. So there's the scores on the board. Song Mai Siob of Korea, two. Sada Asal of Iran, two. Iranian player kept the lead for so long, but just when it counted, psychologically, Song Mai Siob of Korea pulled it back level just at the end of that second, uh, second period. So what do they do now, Will? Do they attack? Do they counter? What do they do? This is the choice they have to make. Attack and risk a counter-attack against them, or counter-attack and not score points because they've been too passive. This well, is the question now. there's the strategy, and that's what's so important in Taekwondo. Uh, Ewan, you're a trainer, you're a fighter yourself. What would you be saying to your players now at this point at even scores? I, I would be encouraging my fighters now to look for that opening, to move around, to make room to dummy, to fake. Look for the opening. I'd tell them to now have an open mind. Don't just make one decision. You've got to react to what the other side is doing. Well, it looks like from your lips to their ears, because you can see, in fact, the mixture of all those strategies there from both players. It's even... Oh! Ewan, there was the kick, there was the takedown. The it was one. very aggressive. But we're not getting no points on that. It's a funny old game. 
Now, obviously, the judges didn't see that as being clearly executed. I'm just wondering if we should be sitting in those corners, me and you were. Well, I don't know We're if that would make. Position. I don't know if that would make for good refereeing, <laughs> because uh, we're probably just a little bit too passionate. <laughs> a little bit. But um, it's not been scored. But it has now, and Iran sneaks ahead, one point, making it three-two. Iran he needs to move around. He needs to not get hit. Well, Iran in the red, Korea in the blue, and Korea's down one, so they got the work Korea! to do. Song Mai Siob of Korea. National pride at stake here, Ewan. That's definitely. There's, there's definitely always been a grudge match between what I would call the two of the most aggressive uh, countries in, in Taekwondo. Okay. Well, so Iran making that prominent position from absolutely nowhere, emerging as one of the leaders in a lot of martial arts. And look at that. It's all changed again, but it's all changed with a balance. It's 4-3 to Iran. Just under a minute left in the third session, and no one wants to expose. They're both claiming the point, but Korea got it. Four. Oh no! Five four. They got it back. It's kick for kick. This is probably, since we've been here today, probably one of the more exciting fights. It's down to the wire. It really is. Now it's not. Iran five, but Korea pulls it back as well. So there's one point in it, and it's a countdown on the clock. Five four. Iran leads. Sada Asal of Iran has managed to dominate his Korean opponent. Taekwondo, the Korean national sport. It must be so much pressure for Song Mai Siob of Korea. And look at that. He's pulled it back right when it counts. Ten seconds to go. Ewan. I can't believe what happened there. You can see the Iranian fighter tried for a two-pointer, a head kick. And it was unsuccessful, and straight away the Korean fighter took advantage of that situation and put that point in. Well, it's even Stevens on the line. It's down to the wire, and I don't know what happens at this stage, but uh, they've both got penalties against them. They've finished evenly. I think they're going to go an extra round. Well, well, the uh, referees won't be calling an extra round. I've just been advised by Ewan that uh, that's not the rule system. But the judges will make a decision on superior fighter. Run me through that, Ewan. Well, they're going to look technically, uh, if I get this right, uh, and uh, don't quote me on this, but they're going to look uh, technically now on uh, who uh, did the more technical techniques and who was the more aggressive fighter, generally speaking. Unless, of course, they're doing... Uh, let's just have a look here. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think they fight on. Better fight, OK? Fight. Yeah. Yes. Well, they Ewan, they're going to carry on. Vanders has called it right. Yeah, you're right. Again. <laughs> I, I just had a little. No, I'm not always right. I just had a throw back to the 80s there. Yeah, I'm right. not always right. I'm just never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they go to a fourth and extra round in this, the men's Five. 67 kilogram featherweight category of the. 2007 Beijing World Taekwondo Championships. It's the semi-final. It's been even all the way. But two more minutes, a fourth and final session, and Korea gets an admonishment. So already Iran sneaking ahead. What a face-off this is. We've seen some really smart combinations from the Korean, but we've seen even smarter ones from the Iranian. And that was the perfect example of what uh, I'm talking about when I say smarter combinations. Well, it was... Uh, First point wins, and Iran, Iran got that. It's all about reflex at that stage. Well, the rule system over the years have changed and evolved so much and you could take your pick as to how this would have been decided but uh, it has been and Zada Asal gold medal contest so uh, incredible performance well who would have thought it could have been 
any number of ways to be decided. Extra round, which we thought it was, but it wasn't. It was sudden death. It could have been uh, referee's judgment on uh, superior, more aggressive techniques. But in the end, it came down to, well, what literally is a penalty shootout. Sudden death. That's right. That's right. And uh, like I said, Iran did the right thing there. So up now next for what is the second of the men's 67 kilogram division. From Cuba, V. Abu. From the Netherlands, Dennis Backers. Now, here's a conundrum, Ewan. The Netherlands, well, the Dutch are so good at the world of martial arts. I've said this before. Uh, tulips, cheese and fighters. The Dutch can churn those three out like they were national products. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm travelling over to Holland. Uh, that was uh, one of my the first ever tournaments I did. And I have to say, um, even when the Dutch fighters uh, did foul points, they were precise. I, I went home with uh, quite a few bruises. Well, Dennis Backers for the Netherlands, fighting in the blue. And... Abu of Cuba fighting in the red. They're tall guys, these guys, aren't they? Very rangy, Ewan. That's right. And, uh, you know, at the top of the game, uh, nine times out of ten, it's about, it's obviously a kick in martial art, you know, when it comes to tournament. Kick score points. So nine times out of ten, uh, height is going to play a big advantage, a big point. Well, given that they're both very rangy, it's... Uh, actually the Cuban player that's the taller of the two by a slight, slight advantage there. Well, speak about height, the, the um, referee, she seems to have the height. Yeah, she's... <laughs> so, tense moments, little exchange there, little flurry of action, but no point scored. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Players here will fight for three sessions or three rounds, lasting two minutes each. The Dutch player really light on his feet. He uh, looks like a, looks like a more of a counter fighter. It looks like he's looking for the opening. But as you say, rightly say, you can never tell the Dutch players because they come from such a pedigree of great fighters. So many. Ramon Deck, uh, just, uh, Ernesto Roost, but Bonyaski. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's fighters that have come from traditional martial arts that's and right. gone on to become professionals in uh, some other, you know, um, uh, professional discipline like K1, etc. But uh, just looking at these young fighters here now, look at the skills and... Uh, Incredible. And it's so, also a testament, if you don't mind me saying, Will, of uh, the respect that uh, the fighters now have for the um, Seni combat show, that Ernesto Hoost is actually coming over to appear and, uh, and lend his support to that show um, at the NEC, uh, at, sorry, Excel Centre. used to be NEC at the Excel Centre in London. Well, that's right. He's putting it back into the sport. And uh, you're so right to mention Seni because uh, this weekend in London, the Excel Centre is hosting the ultimate, I would venture, in martial arts expos. That's uh, Seni, which uh, means fighting spirits, and uh, everyone, that's anyone from the four corners of the globe will be there and you'll see demonstrations from the Gracie Barra if you're into jiu-jitsu. You'll be able to see Master Ewan Briscoe himself and he'll be taking through the British Olympic Taekwondo squad. There'll be Master Han from Korea, the Haidang Gumbo president. Lots of action there, so log on at seni.com for more information. So back to the action here, and uh, Cuba versus the Netherlands. We've got Dennis Backers 
of the Netherlands standing off from Abu of Cuba. Cuba in the red, the Netherlands in the blue. Well, score that one. It's explosive action. I, I, I'd have to see that in slow motion. I'd have to actually uh, have a look at the monitors later on and see that in slow motion. Well, Cuba, the I judges saw it, and Cuba 2 to Netherlands 1. And it, it really, those kicks were firing in. And there's been a, of late uh, over the last I'd say four or five years uh, a great emphasis on the double turning kick triple turning kick uh, where they just uh, literally stay, stay airborne for quite a while and score points it's incredible isn't it so the standoff now and uh, at, at the Senate show, I should, just a correction on that uh, Will at the Senate show uh, we've got the Greek uh, I know the Greek Taekwondo champion, he'll be actually doing a WTF uh, seminar as well. So lots of action lots at Senny. things happening. And of course, if you're listening and you're in the UK, you can get more information about Taekwondo at www.panthataekwondo.co.uk. President and founder, Master Ewan Briscoe, sitting booth side with me here, bringing you this live action from the Changping Stadium in Beijing and a completely different bout we've got on our hands now uh, different to the previous round between Korea and Iran where it was so tense so action-packed these two much more calculating much more strategy based they're not holding back they're not holding back they're calculating but they're when they make that those techniques they're making it explosively Well, we'll be bringing you action over the next few days here on Eurosport 2. We'll be bringing you the action live right at the heart of the Changping Stadium where it's happening. So if you're a lover of the martial arts, watch your listings for this explosive and dynamic Olympic sport taekwondo there's the scores after the second round dennis backers one for the netherlands and abu of cuba two they've both got penalty warnings half points for that so as they go into the third everything to play for so cuba coach and the dutch coach giving it to their players Almost nothing in it, but that's what put the Cuban player in front. And you can see what makes this such a dynamic, explosive martial art. Just that rapid fire of kicks. Well, blink and you miss it. Those legs are just, they're like Uzis going on. That's right. Well, these players at this level and in this sort of form, Unstoppable. <laughs> 2 1 to Cuba. Although I'd say during this fight, um, Netherlands have been the more aggressive player, but like you said before, Will, it's uh, more about strategy, it's more about the thinking fighter. Well, the counters are really working well for the winners in all of the bouts we've seen so far. And a nice strike there. Well, Dennis Backers has pulled one back. Good skills there. Not scored. And um, the judges very, very harsh on techniques. They want to see clean, precise, executed techniques here to give a score. Executed with the right part of the foot or the hand. That's what, they want. That's what they're looking for. It's three all now and two, one deduction, point, half point each. Evenly matched these players and the clock's ticking away in this third and final round. And uh, I think it's safe to say with half a minute to go now, whoever scores the next technique, they'll be going through. So extremely tense. 
both players looking not to make a mistake. Come out. And the referee admonishing. And a full point deduction for standing off from the Dutch fighter. Well, it's harsh out there. Cuba now joining the ranks of the uh, admonished. But uh, it'll make no difference because on the final bell, both fighters score. It's 4-4. Four, four but it's down to the amount of admonishments they've got, the penalties, and unfortunately... So the scoreboard up in this male featherweight 67 kilogram category shows that Dennis Backers of Holland has scored four and that Abu of Cuba has scored four, but unfortunately Backers has more penalty infringements. So I'm gonna take a bet here, Will. I like the other game. I reckon they're going to go to a uh, score. I reckon person with uh, the less uh, penalty points is one. Well, yeah. So let's hear what the official verdict is. And uh, sort of a Mexican wave from the crowds here. Packing the Changping Stadium. The eyes of the world, of course, watching these Beijing WTF World Taekwondo Championships. To carry on. Well, too close to call, so it's sudden death. <laughs> Deckers, I say Deckers, Backers, uh, living to fight another day there. Very close call for him, and uh, too close for the judges to let it lie. So into the fourth and sudden death round. Well, it's tense. Whoever scores first goes through. And uh, one mistake could be costly. And this, uh, this version of uh, events, um, I think it adds to the excitement because uh, you know that when you go back out for that last round, you can't afford to make a mistake. I have to say, Ewan, that the judges here have uh, been very, very uh, frugal with awarding points. That's right. But in this instance, they've awarded it to Cuba in that exchange. And Cuba goes through a disappointment for backers. But Cuba's abu, well, in with a chance for the gold. So, Abu will go head to head with Assad Asal. Abu, the winner there by sudden death, he'll go through to the gold medal contest. And uh, unfortunately for backers, he'll have to settle for bronze. But Cuba goes head to head with Iran. Backers thought he'd done it, but as we can see in the slow-mo, he was just a split second behind. So our next bout is the female 47 kilogram final. Yungpu of China versus Wapa of Taipei. So forgive me for that, that's uh, Taipei, uh, Thailand.
So the women's final here at the 2007 Beijing WTF World Taekwondo Championships. Wu Jingyu of China goes up against Yuanka of Thailand. Wu Jingyu of China with that superb performance through the quarter and the semis goes up against Wang Cha of Thailand. China fighting in the blue, Thailand in the red. There's a point straight away. Oh, that was sweet, Yuan. She's not messing about. She just went straight in for the kill, headshot straight away. Two points. I'm Will Vanders, if you've just joined us. And I'm joined here by Master Ewan Briscoe, nine times British Taekwondo champion and European champion team member. Well, this is always going to be a tough competition. But at the final level, well, the uh, standard here is just incredibly high. And China just showing just what you require to be at gold medal level here with that two-point score in the opening of this final competition. And listen to the um, home support. It's almost deafening here. That's right. And of course, yes, you're right. Local girl, as it were. Wu Jinyu with supporters here. Thailand. Yuan Cha put in a very good performance in her road to reaching this. Three to nil. Big uphill battle now for um, Thailand. Well, it just goes to show how difficult this is going to be because if China can uh, score that many points so quickly, time out for the readjustment of some protective gear. But uh, China straight in with two points right at the very front. Put on another one to make it three. We've got less than half a minute left in the first period and Thailand trailing. And it's just really quite awesome that uh, China can score that amount of points so quickly. Great technique. Uh, Thailand just doesn't seem to get the distance right in the, the techniques. Uh, I think the Chinese uh, fighter has got good understanding uh, of uh, spatial awareness. Well, she's going to need that because uh, China taking advantage of everything here. So at the end of the first period, the first round, China leads three points to nil. Wu Jinyu of China, three points ahead. Yapa of Thailand trailing with zero as we go into the second round of this, the women's final in the 47 kilogram division. There's some highlights from the action of the first round. You can see uh, the um, Thai fighter tends to go in, it may be the, the trainers, he tends to go in with their head down. This actually gave uh, the Chinese fighter a uh, good opportunity for the headshot. Well, it was perfectly executed, Ewan, and, and uh, we knew straight away, I mean, some of the point scoring, because it's so fast, because you have to be at mat level, really, to gauge where, why, what, when and how, it's confusing, but there was no confusion there. That was straight in and uh, superb. So, Wamcha of Thailand, trailing three points. Beautiful back kick, uh, Dwight Chagi from China. Not scored. Not scored. Wu Jinyu of China, paying uh, a high price there, because that would have secured her domination of this gold medal contest. So much at stake, so much to play for. These World Taekwondo Championships, of course, the precursor to the Olympic Games for the Chinese. So all eyes focused on this. And what a splendid opening day we've had. The opening ceremony performed spectacularly for this, the 2007 Beijing 
WTF World Taekwondo Championships. Well, spectacular point scoring there. China adds two more with that headshot and leads by five in the second period. Incredible action here. In um, any other sport, you might think that uh, Thailand wouldn't stand a chance on paper. But, you know, just like boxing, the Thai fighter's got to kick his chance. Well, it just takes one kick. Yeah, but uh, I think it's a hard, uh, a hard task ahead of the uh, Thai oh. fighter because five points from China. Well, China's done it, and I think the Thai fighter has uh, retired. And China takes gold. And in front of the home crowd, Wu Jinyu of China has done it. She takes gold. Silver for Thailand. So here at the 2007 Beijing W2F World Taekwondo Championship, Wu Jinyu is the winner of the gold medal after an awesome performance in the first round and then dominating the second, five points to nil, sending Thailand's Wamcha off the mat in retirement. And uh, you can see the home crowd here right behind, and this is how it was done. I think from the beginning, from the off, video, that's a Nero Chegi chopping kick to the face. From that point on, uh, China really set the tone. And I, I think really the Thai fighter had an uphill battle from yeah. then on. And uh, running east looking for a sunset was the Thai player because against a performance like that from Wu Jinyu of China, well... You don't get many of those strikes to the pound at this level. That's and right. that was sheer dominance. Fantastic play. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is the final of Benson Feeming. Well, we've got another final coming up for you now. The female Bantam 55 kilogram division. Our referee, Carmen Navarro Ingles. Ingles, forgive me. From Spain. She'll be presiding over this final. From Chinese Taipei. Taipei Seng Yi Chun. Jun Hin Yi from Korea. Tense moments here now to see who's going to get the medal placing. <laughs> National pride at stake for the Korean fighter Jun Yin Hee. So in red. From Korea, <laughs> Ju Jin Hee, from Chinese Taipei, fighting in blue, Seng Yi Chun. This is for gold, everything to play for here. And already they're checking distances, posturing, finding out if who's the counter fighter, who's the attacking fighter. You'll find generally a counter fighter, when you make a dummy forward, they'll make a backward movement. An attacking fighter, you make a dummy to them or you make a fake, they're likely to stand their ground or make a movement forward. So you can generally work out which is which. Well, they're still working it out, Ewan, because it's one all. And uh, that's a high score for both players so early on in this. I say so right. early on, we're almost a minute gone now. But uh, all about drawing the opponent in and... Uh, 
look at uh, the Korean fighter tempting, taunting. You notice uh, the fighters don't keep their hands up. Uh, this is uh, almost uh, asking your opponent to make a technique to that, that spot on your body so that you can then make the counter technique. Well, it's a good strategy because Chinese Taipei have just got a warning against Korea for standing off. The Korean fighter making it so difficult and uh, taunting the Chinese Taipei player. Uh, the national coach for uh, Chinese Taipei, he's been the national coach for as long as I can remember. Uh, very nice man. I met him in uh, Korea in 2002. Very nice gentleman outside the ring. In fact, uh, a few times uh, we've had a few soft drinks together. I say soft drinks because my mom's watching. Still 1-1. One, one. The clock against both fighters here at the end of the first period. And that's it. Well, it's difficult to see who's going to advantage themselves here, Ewan. It looks very evenly matched. I mean, in the last final, China was just so dominant. But here, I think it's uh, going to be a tricky situation for both players. <laughs> So, the gold medal contest in the female bantamweight 55 kilogram division. Seng Yi Chun of Chinese Taipei squares off against Ju Jin He of Korea as we go into the second round of this gold medal contest Some tense moments for both fighters they're only separated by one half point deduction out there I'm not quite sure what for it seems to be some technical uh... yeah, it seems to be a technical thing maybe uh, it could be something to do with the, the computer system uh, where they score the points so just a few minutes while that's been corrected and uh, a standoff from both fighters here that'll add to the tension they need to keep focus they need to be on their game and uh, this of course is a distraction they don't need because what's at stake here the gold medal in this world taekwondo championships oh and a good exchange there and uh, judges reward it all chinese taipei gets a point korea also so three two for korea oh junior he turns beautifully there and gets the counter chinese taipei rewarded as well at this stage this uh, fight could go either way this is uh, probably one of the closer fights we've seen today Will. it's very closely drawn and of course at championship level gold medal level well it's nice to see that uh, Truly, the best players have found themselves, you know, by natural selection, being up on the uh, championship podium here. Well, an attempt there. Didn't amount to anything. Not scored by the judges. Chinese Taipei opening the target area, taunting. And the 
feint, the twist, and the speed. So they're both rewarded there. You and Chinese Taipei just missed out on uh, two pointer to the head. Just missed out on that. Just under half a minute left in the second session here. I think this one's going down to the wire again. Well, the tension here in the Changping Stadium. Just incredible. Looking to see whether Korea will maintain some kind of national pride. So, Seng Yishuan, Yung Yin Hee, five to four. There's the scores in this gold medal contest, round two. And the Chinese Taipei coach really giving instructions to Seng Yichun. And it literally is everything to play for. And as I watch these fights, it just uh, adds to the enthusiasm I've got for the up-and-coming World qualifica Qualification Championships at the NEC Arena in Manchester, the MEN, sorry, Arena in Manchester. It's to be held in England, arranged by the British Taekwondo Control Board. Well, of course, yes, those championships are uh, crucial to the selection process for athletes in this sport, but... Uh, this is what they'll aim for eventually and that's a gold medal at the world taekwondo championships and that's what these two players are fighting for with korea storming forward now with an extra point over the point lead giving her six over four to chinese taipei and really showing confidence now she can afford to try and just be a little bit more fluid in her performance. That's right. And, uh, with that two-point margin now going into this third session. Chinese Taipei would have to be looking for a high section kick, uh, Tolia Chagi to the head. I can't see any other way around this because she's already actually trailing. Oh, now that's even things up slightly. There's a little bit of advantage there, but not enough i think to change the situation will no they've got uh, two warnings against them uh two penalties there six four korea being spurred on and chanted by her teammates in the crowd here but uh under a minute left now and unless chinese taipei can pull something out of the bag it's going to be a very difficult proposition. There you have it. Korea scores an extra point. The confidence of Ju Jin Hee, just legion. <laughs> and the speed in which the dynamics change in uh, Taekwondo at this level is just incredible. You look at the footwork, you look at the stances, the way they change and uh, just the sheer speed, incredible. It's looking to be a little bit academic now. I don't think there's a chance uh, of Taipei uh, pulling this back, but you know, these are the famous words. Well, yeah, but I think you're right, Ewan. Uh, you've got to be <laughs> the king of wishful thinking or the queen of wishful thinking in this case, if you think you can pull back three points. But the scoreboard's been readjusted there. Well, Korea lost a half point because there's, a, there's actually a rule for time wasting where you feign injury or fall down. You'll, you'll lose half a point for that. Well, it is academic because in the final analysis, Korea have done it. Korea have taken the gold. Ju Jin Hee has beaten Seng Yi Chuan of Chinese Taipei. She will take silver, but Korea takes gold. Ju Jin He from Korea won the match. Congratulations to Jiu 
So in the female bantam 55 kilogram division, Korea's Jun Yin-hee, winner by points, takes gold. And sadly, Chinese Taipei's player Seng Yi Chun has to take silver, but uh, no mean feat by this player. Strategic play right the way through, but uh, Korea exerted dominance in the final session. Knew she clinched it and nailed it perfectly. Such a lot of confidence that player, Ewan. Definitely, and, and uh, just watching the slow motion, you could see the power, you know, moving away turning kicks, the speed and power. I think that just overwhelmed. The Taipei player. So, the men's final coming up now. Two unusual nations, it has to be said, to be going for gold. Iran and Cuba. I'm Will Vanders, I'm joined booth side bringing you live action from the 2007 Beijing WTF World Taekwondo Championships by Ewan Briscoe, nine times British champion and uh, European Championship team member. Uh, We've got the men's final of the 67 kilogram featherweight division. We've got two nations not normally associated with uh, the world of martial arts. Cuba and Iran. Cuba being represented by V. Yebu. And Iran being represented by Assad. So, the first of a scheduled three in this gold medal contest. Iran in the blue, Cuba in the red. And he's such a good player, isn't he? Assad is a very, very confident fighter. Very confident fighter. Fight. You can see he's very relaxed in his techniques, he's very relaxed in his stance. Emerging nation, Iran, in all the martial arts, it has to be said. And uh, this just proves the point fantastically. Assad Azal of Iran, so focused. And uh, techniques so crisp. And there's a tendency to just have too much contact. But he's just got the balance right, hasn't he, Ewan? That's right. He's a very... Uh, explosive fighter uh, you can see that he's it, it, for me it looks like sometimes he has to hold his techniques back in order to score good points well this live action coming to you on Eurosport 2 from the 2007 Beijing WTF World Taekwondo Championships uh, we'll be bringing you more action from Beijing and the Taekwondo over the coming weekend uh, we'll be bringing you action tomorrow afternoon that's Saturday and uh, look at your listings, please, to check up on the timings for that. But uh, I'm here to Two give one. you the action as it happens with uh, Master Ewan Briscoe. Back to this gold medal contest. And Iran sneaks ahead with another, another point. Cuba clawing it back, but to no avail. Still 2-1 to Iran. Beautiful front leg turning kick, followed immediately by a back leg turning kick by Iran. Could have scored 3-2. Well, he's such a crisp executor of these techniques, Iran. That's why he's getting good, good scores here, because the techniques are clean. So there's the scores so far. Men's featherweight 67 kilogram division brings Yebu of Cuba against Assad Azal of Iran. Iran leading. And this is what did it. Assad Azal for Iran in the blue. 
in Nari 73, the World Taekwondo Federation showing confidence and indeed dominance in this men's gold medal contest competition. A competition that incidentally brings some incredible statistics here. The uh, 16 member US team, they'll be looking to improve on the four medal tally from 2005. And of course the legendary Lopez family. You and we discussed them earlier, didn't we? And they'll be looking to try and repeat the three times win at the 2005 World Championships when all three brothers and sisters claim gold medals. Like I said, uh, one of the more talented families uh, in Taekwondo today. Legendary stuff as this competition moves on. The first day having gone incredibly well with some fantastic action. Iran going for gold here in this men's final against Cuba. I would say um, back to the Lopez family. In America, probably nothing's happened like that since the days of Benny the Jet. Fight. You crickets. So that's a good uh, that's a good analogy because there's been so many years that they haven't had the whole family. Benny the Jet had, as a kickboxer, one of the first fighters to beat a uh, Japanese in Japan. Hello. And followed by Chica. most of his family Chica. doing Chica. the same thing. So that's action well worth watching out for over the coming week while these championships continue. Oh, and Beautiful look at technique. that. Triple Tully Chaggy, just like I said, feet never touched the ground once in between. Lovely technique. So Iran ahead now, five, Cuba trail three. Under a minute left in this second round, and the confidence of Assad Azil knows no limitation, does it? And the Cuban fighter just showed his ability to get head height with the technique there. I wish he'd have put a little bit more torque on that and uh, used it. That would have scored a great two points. Exactly. Didn't manage to squeeze that out, though. But uh, Iran, just such a dangerous player. He's taken advantage of every mistake that the Cuban fighters make. Hello! And he's standing off now. Drawing him in. Done it again. Oh, and the referee. Okay, the referee's just uh, warned Iran for not coming forward, not fighting, literally. It's strange to me. Maybe I'm wearing the wrong glasses today. Well, there's a deduction there. The scores have been adjusted. Come on. Right. He's taken a half point and it's become one point. He got another half point. One point off. Well, you have to be at eye level to see what the judges are seeing. But four plays three, Iran in the lead. So there'll be <laughs> some words from the coach there in the Iran corner. Cuba, well, he'll be happy to have survived thus far because he's still very much in this now with the readjustment of the points. Yeah, although um, the referee had a go at the uh, Iranian player for time waiting, I don't actually blame him because, uh, yes, we want to keep the, the sport exciting, but he has to really look after his points. Well, we just saw there in the replay that triple kick there by the Iranian oh, oh. fighter Azid Azal. That put him way ahead, but it was clawed back as the referee penalised him for standing off. Make sure we fight, okay? Just, the referee just warned them, make sure you fight. So, tricky now because the strategy of standing off and inviting a fighter in for the counter has to be played very, very carefully. Iran with four points, Cuba with three. Everything will count. An attempt at a chopping kick uh, by the Cuban fighter, but straight away countered by the Iranian fighter, but no points scored uh, from the judges. So nigged itself out there. But the Iranian uh, fighter has got this ability and to counter, but the Cuban fighter has got a, a, a flexibility. He can make that double point score. He can get the two points if he tries. Well, there's still over a minute left in this third session. One penalty to Iran, but Iran has four points. If Cuba can score one, it would put Cuba with the advantage. 
as his team members look on it's tense will cuba get the first gold in a men's competition at this championships iran penalized again So a half point deduction, and Cuba's done it. Fight. And the tenseness on the Iranian coach's face. Hello. I think Chica. it's safe to say Chico. whoever scores or gets Chico. deducted will go on to win. And when you say safe, you mean in the widest possible sense of the word. Well, we'll be leaving this live action right at the end of this last session once the announcement has been made so whether iran or cuba takes gold remains to be seen it's so close you couldn't call it we hope you've enjoyed this action live from the 2007 beijing world taekwondo championships here at the Chiangping stadium i'm sensei will vanders i've been joined by my mates master you and briscoe we've been just on the edge of our seats with this live action and we still are how do you call this we don't know whether it's going to go to sudden death or not but it's 5-5 and penalty to be taken into consideration so we presume that it'll be sudden death because there's not enough margin in the penalties and points to make a difference so uh five five and one and a half penalties versus one penalty and the replay of the action just shows how close this competition is being contested well what a way to go out of a competition it's sudden death the first point scored will depict who's the winner here today it's for gold they start off nil nil everything that's gone on before counts for nothing it's all down to this first point attempt to turn the kick and that's the point there and that's it Cuba's done it They've come from the beyond and come back and won the fight. Well, after such dominance from the Iranian player from early on, Cuba, sudden death, pulled it out when it counted. And the Iranian fighter has got to be so disappointed. He takes silver and gold goes to Cuba. We hope you've enjoyed this live action. We certainly have. We'll be back with you again tomorrow. And uh, till then, look out for your listings to find out more about the action from the Taekwondo Championships and take care of yourselves. From you and I, goodbye. <laughs> So we leave you with the slow-mos of the action from the men's final and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. From you and I.